Now we're going to wire the electronics for your X-Carve. We're going to start by putting the power supply interface circuit board onto the power supply. You want to back out the screws that correspond to the fingers that come off of the circuit board. Slide the circuit board onto the terminal blocks on the power supply. And then screw the screws back in through the board into the terminal block. Now we're going to attach the G-Shield enclosure to the power supply interface. Use two button head cap screws and two hex nuts to do this. Next slide the power supply interface over the circuit board. and use two screws on either side of the interface to attach the interface to the power supply. You'll notice on the side of the power supply there's a switch to switch between 115 volts and 220 volts. Make sure that it matches the voltage coming out of your outlet. Now we'll install the Arduino into the G-Shield enclosure. Use three M3 socket head cap screws and the included nylon washers. These washers help the board stand off from the G-Shield enclosure so that we don't get an accidental ground connection. Thread them under the screws by hand from the bottom side of the board and make sure that a few threads of the screw are showing. Then put the Arduino into the G-Shield enclosure. You'll notice that there's a slot for the USB hub to stick out of, and also some threaded inserts that we'll screw into. Make sure that the screws are lined up with the threaded inserts, and then tighten them all in an alternating pattern. Now we'll strip the stepper wire from all of the stepper motors. Trim off the shielding and the ground wire and the string that are inside the jacket. Take one stepper cable and twist the black and green wires together. Then try to move each axis and see which one gives you resistance. You can see here that the Z axis gave me resistance. That means that this stepper cable belongs to the Z motor. It's a good idea to label the stepper cable once you figure this out.
Repeat this procedure with the other two lengths of stepper cable to figure out which motors they belong to. Only twist one pair of black and green wires at a time. After we've identified all of the axes, we're going to wire them into the G-Shield. Loosen all of the screws in the green terminal blocks. This will make it a lot easier to put the wires inside of them. It helps to be consistent with the wiring, so we'll go from left to right, black, green, white, red. The garble shield is marked which motor belongs to which terminal block. So match the stepper cable for the Z to the terminal block labeled Z on the garble shield, Y to Y and X to X. When you're done, it should look like this. Now we're going to put the G-Shield onto the Arduino. There are pins on the bottom of the G-Shield that line up to the socket on the Arduino. Next, trim about 6 inches from your zip wire. We'll use this to wire power from the power supply to the G-Shield. Pull apart the red and black wires at both ends and strip about a quarter inch of jacket off of them. Do the same for the 24 volt fan. Twist the black wire of the 24 volt fan with the black wire from the zip wire and do the same with the red. Put these twisted pairs into the power terminal on the G-Shield. The board is marked ground and V-mote. Wire the black pair into ground and the red pair into V-mote. Make sure that all the copper from the wires makes it inside of the terminal. Next, we'll use the other end of the zip wire to wire into the power supply. You'll notice that the power supply interface is marked V- and V+. The red wire goes to V+, and the black wire goes to V-. Again, make sure that all of the copper from the wire makes it into the terminal block. If there's too much copper exposed, trim some off and put it back into the terminal. Now we'll put the top of the G-Shield enclosure on. First mount the 24 volt fan to this top. You'll notice there are threaded inserts in the top specifically for the screws that come through the fan. Then attach the top of the G-Shield enclosure to the bottom with two small M3 socket head cap screws. Now we'll take the zip wire from the spindle, strip it as before, 
and wire it into the remaining two spots on the power terminal block. Again, you'll notice that the power supply interface is marked spindle plus and spindle minus. The black wire goes to spindle minus and the red wire goes to spindle plus.